قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي اللهم صل على محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The fifth episode with regards to Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه In this episode we will explore and discuss some of the most important characteristics of Umar's Khilafah. The key to Umar's personality was his faith in Allah and his preparations for the last day. This faith is the reason for the remarkable balance in the personality of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Thus, his strength did not undermine his fairness. His strength did not undermine his fairness. His authority did not undermine his mercy. His richness did not undermine his humility. Thus, he received the help and support of Allah and he fulfilled the meaning of Tawheed by knowledge. And he fulfilled the meaning of Tawheed and the meaning of good character by certainty in his faith, yaqeen, acceptance, submission, sincerity, and love. He had a sound understanding of the true nature of Iman and the true nature of Tawheed in the oneness of Allah and the effects of his deep faith were manifested in his life. Because of his great fear of Allah and his taqwa and his strictness in taking stock of himself, he would often say, if a lamb were to die on the banks of Euphrates, I would fear that Allah might call Umar to account for it. It was narrated that once Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu saw or Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I saw Umar ibn al-Khattab rushing by on a camel. And I said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, where are you going? And he said, oh, Ali, one of the zaka camels has run away. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I said to him, you are causing humiliation to the Khalifs who will come after you. Umar said, Ali meant, meant that you are so cautious about this, these things and you are setting such a, such a standard that it will be difficult for the people that will follow. And therefore you are causing humiliation to the Khalifs who will come after you. Umar said, O oh Abu Hassan, O oh father of Hassan, do not blame me for by the one who sent Muhammad as a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if a female kid were to die on the banks of Euphrates, Umar would be taken to task for it on the day of Qiyamah. These are some of the attributes which were in the list of Umar's taqwa, tawheed, and faith in Allah, and his preparations to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Scholars have discussed the features of his personality, and the most important of which were the strength of his religious commitment, the strength of his courage, the strong faith, the fairness, the knowledge that Umar had, the experience that he had, the deep insight that he had about issues, the dignity that he displayed, the strength of his character, the far-sightedness, his generosity, he is setting a good example. 
the compassion of his in spite of him being harsh in the days of ignorance and before Khilafah. But after his Khilafah, the examples of compassion and the seriousness of resolving issues and the toughness that he showed to the enemies, the piety that he was endowed with and the consciousness and the awareness of Allah. And people and scholars discussed his leadership skills as has been demonstrated during the his Khilafah, and among the most important of which were his listening and his openness to criticism, his ability to motivate people and get things done, his taking part in decision-making on the basis of shura, his adaptability and flexibility during occasions of emergencies, and he's keeping a close eye on his governors and his agents throughout his life, one will note that these characteristics and more. However, we do not want to list all of them for fear of repetitiveness. Details could be found in the books of history. However, let's talk of some of the salient Features from his biography. Ali ibn Abi Talib and his children. People generally talk about the relationship that Umar had. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was extremely compassionate towards Ali ibn Abi Talib and the children of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Umar showed great deal of respect to the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and preferred them over his own children, preferred them over his own family. Let me mention one example. al Hussein ibn Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the son of Ali, the son of Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha, mentions that Umar said to me one day, Oh my son, why don't you come and join us sometimes at home? So, one day I went out and he was alone with Muawiyah. And Ibn Umar, the son of Umar, was at the door and was not granted permission to sit with him. So I went to the house as Umar called for me and he said, come and spend some time with me. When I went to the house, I found that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was with Amir Muawiyah and his own son, Abdullah ibn Umar, was not granted permission to enter and he was sitting at the door. So I went back. Later, when Umar met me after that, he said, oh my son, did I not see you coming to us? And I said, I came, but you were alone with Muawiyah. And I saw Ibn Umar come back. So I also came back. He said, you have more right to be given permission to enter than Abdullah Ibn Umar, who is my son. For all the blessings that we have, as you can see, I co are caused by Allah. Then by you, the Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Prophet, and he put his hand on my head. Umar's life in society. Umar's life in society was a living application of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of his Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From various incidents, we can see Islam embodied in his life. For example, Umar and his concern for women in society. Umar was concerned about the Muslims and especially about the Muslim women folk and daughters and the old women. He would give them their rights and relieve them of their wrongs that were done to them. He would take care of families whose men folk were away on jihad and make sure that widows got their rights in a well-known comment, he said, By Allah, if I live longer 
I will not leave any widow of the people of Iraq in need of anyone else. Umar went out in the darkness of night. Talha ibn Ubaidullah says, I used to see Umar walking around at night. One day I followed Umar to see what is he up to. I followed Umar and Umar entered one house. Then he entered another. The following morning, Talha went to that house and found a paralyzed, blind old woman. And he said to her, Who was this man who comes to you? She said, He has been taking care for me for such and such a time. He brings what I need and takes away any of my rubbish that I leave behind. Talha said to himself, May your mother be bereft of you. How could you check and doubt on Umar? Umar's concern for the weaker members of society is one of the main factors of success and one of the greatest means of drawing closer to Allah. The leaders of Islamic movements, rulers of Muslim peoples, imams of mosques, and Muslims in general should pay attention to this aspect of their societies. Umar's night patrols. There can be no doubt that the night patrols form the basis for the police system that Umar ta'ala anhu had introduced. Stay tuned when we come back, inshallah, we will continue discussing the night patrols of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which historians have mentioned in the books of history. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We continue discussing the Khilaf of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in this episode of ours. And let's talk about some of the night patrols of Umar. Some historians have stated Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was in charge of the night patrols at the time of Abu Bakr. And that Umar ibn al-Khattab took charge of the night patrols himself when he became the Khalifa. He used to bring his freed slave, Aslam, with him. And sometimes he would accompany and take Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, a very close friend of him, in the night patrols. And the night patrols refers to going around at night and keeping a lookout for thieves and evildoers and others whose evil is feared. We should rightfully regard this as the first step in the establishment of a police force because the believers used to guard themselves and prevent evil among themselves during the day. Then when they went to sleep, the night patrols took over the task of guarding them. Then when the numbers of evildoers increased and they began to commit evil openly in broad daylight, there was a need for guards to keep a lookout during the day too. So the police force was also established by Umar. Prohibition on hastening to wean infants was a means or this aspect came to the attention of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu during one of his night patrols. It was narrated that Aslam, the freed slave of Umar, and Ibn al-Khattab said that some merchants had come to Medina and camped in the prayer place. Umar said to Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, shall we not go guard them tonight? And they went. So they guarded them overnight. They prayed at night, and Umar heard a child crying. He went towards him and said to his mother, Fear Allah and look after your child. And then he went back to his place. And this happened a few times. Eventually, at the end of the night, he heard the child crying again. 
So he went to its mother and said to her, Wow to you, what a bad mother you are. Why has your child not stopped crying all night? She did not know who this man was. And she said, O slave of Allah, I am distracting him from nursing. But he refuses to accept that. And he said, why? She said, because the Khalifa Umar does not give a stipend except for children who are weaned. Umar had allocated a stipend to every child who was weaned. He said, how old is the son of yours? And she said, so many months. He then said, wow to you. Do not hasten to wean him. He went for his Fajr prayer. It is recorded that when he prayed the Fajr, the people could not hear his recitation clearly because of his excessive weeping. And he said, wow to Umar, how many of the Muslim children has he killed? Then he ordered a caller to cry out, do not hasten to wean your children, for we will give a stipend to every child born in Islam. And he wrote an instruction to all the regions for this to be effect. What a beautiful story this is. And how great was his justice. Thus every newborn was recorded in the state records. And allocated a stipend from the Baytul Mal of the Muslims. Because the Baytul Mal belongs to all the Muslims. And the one who is in charge of it is a trustee. And it is not permissible for him to dispose of any of it unlawfully or to withhold anything from one who is entitled to it. Another example of his care for women. Setting a limit on how long soldiers can be away from their wives. One of the result of Umar's night patrols was that he went out one night to patrol Medina and he heard a woman in great distress saying in a in a poetry form, this night is too long and I cannot go to sleep for I have no one to sleep with. By Allah, were it not for Allah, I would have made this bed shake. Umar said, may Allah have mercy on you. Then he sent her some clothing and money and wrote a letter telling her husband to come to her. According to another report, after he heard this, he went and knocked on his daughter Hafsa's door, who was the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. She said, O oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, what brings you here at this hour? He said, O oh, my daughter, how long can a woman put up with her husband being away? Hafsa said, she can put up with a month, two months or three, but the fourth month she will lose patience. And Umar wrote to the soldiers that they should not be kept away for more than four months. This was how Umar set a limit on how long a soldier could be away from his wife. And no one disputed with him concerning this. Amr ibn As wrote to Umar telling him about an Egyptian custom where the people used to throw young girls into the river every year. They said to him, O oh governors, this Nile of ours will not flow otherwise. He asked, What do you mean? They said, When it is the twelfth of this month, we look for a virgin girl who is still with her parents, and we make a deal with her parents. Then we dress her in the finest jewelry and clothing and throw her into the Nile. Umar said to them, this cannot be allowed in Islam. For Islam erases what came before it. For a while the Nile did not flow at all and the people thought of migrating. Then Amr ibn As wrote to Umar ibn al-Khattab and told him of that. Umar ibn al-Khattab wrote back saying, you have done the right thing. I am sending you this piece of paper. In this letter, throw this letter into the Nile. And when this letter came, Amr ibn As took out the piece of paper on which was written, From the slave of Allah, 
and the Amir al Mu'mineen, Umar ibn al Khattab, to the Nile of the people of Egypt. If the decision of flowing is up to you, then do not flow, for we have no need of you. But if you flow by the command of Allah, the one, the subduer, who is the one who makes you flow, then we ask Allah to make you flow. He threw the piece of paper into the Nile. And, they went, and when they woke up on a Saturday, they found that Allah had caused the Nile to flow to a depth of 16 cubits in a single night. Thus Allah put an end to this evil custom of the people of Egypt. And up to this day, the Nile River has not stopped flowing. Umar explained the meaning of Tawheed in this piece of paper and stated that the Nile only flowed by the will and decree of Allah. He proved to the people the falseness of their belief, which was deeply rooted in their hearts. And through his wise actions, he eradicated this belief from the hearts of Egyptians. Umar in his Khilafah had also established religious freedom. Religious freedom, Umar was keen to implement the principles of religious freedom in society. And he summed up his policy towards the Jews and Christians by saying, we gave them a treaty stating that we would leave them alone with regards to their churches to say whatever they want in them and that we would not burden them with more than they can bear and that if their enemies want to harm them, we will fight to defend them and that we will not interfere between them and their religious rulings except if they come to us asking us to judge on the basis of our rulings and that if they keep their affairs to themselves, we will not bother them. The introduction of the Hijri calendar, the Islamic calendar, is regarded as a development that had a major, a major cultural impact. The first one to introduce the system was Umar ibn al-Khattab. There are several reports which speak of the reason for, the, for this. There are some other sayings of Umar which became well known among the people. Let's mention some of them. He said, When did you enslave people whose mothers bore them free? He also said on another occasion, he was a master in poetry. No one is suited to this position except the one who is gentle, without being weak and strong and without being harsh. On another occasion, another of his quote, I want a man for the position of governorship who, when, be is, when he is the leader of people, he would be tough as one of them. And when he is one of them, he would be thought of as a leader. Concerning governors, he said, I complain to Allah of the wrongdoing of the one who is strong and the incapability of the one who is pious. Whoever does not recognize evil is more likely to fall into it. He also said on another occasion, I am not a crafty person, but I cannot be deceived by a crafty person. On another occasion, he said, when Allah commands people to do a thing, he helps them to do it. And when he forbids them to do a thing, he renders them independent of it. Omar also established schools in the various provinces. The infrastructure development and the crisis management at the time of emergencies were some of the developments of the Khilaf of Omar. Roads and means of transportation by land and sea. Establishing of border posts and new cities as military bases and centers for the spread of culture. Waterways from places of abundant water to places where water was scarce. 
financial and judiciary institutions and the development was something from the time of Umar, the Baytul Mal of the Muslims and the establishment of official records, establishment of judicial records, and the list can go on, talking about the many developments during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. These are just some of the salient features of the Khilaf of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, it would be very difficult to mention all of them. I think we will suffice by these few. And for details, one can look at the various books on the biography of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We come to an end of this episode, insha'Allah. In our next episode, we will talk about the end of Umar ibn al-Khattab, the martyrdom of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which, wa which occurred in the month of Muharram, and he was buried in the month of Muharram. It is this month, the month of Muharram, where Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had passed on. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he fill the graves of all the companions of Rasulullah with noor and he keeps us as people who will show respect to the glorious Khilafah and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم صل على محمد قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري